Oh, um, hello. Uh, welcome back to the continuing lecture in financial statements. Now, um, uh, I have some of what we discussed in the last uh, video on um, uh, an Excel example of uh, income statement. So, um, well, this Excel file is uh, available in that um, in our folder uh, in the uh, 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 course materials. Uh, so, um, this income statement is actually a, uh, uh, a slightly um, um, different from uh, the example I used um, before. I mean, it, it's the same thing, but the uh, breakdown of the uh, uh, section uh, is representative of uh, retail business, uh, not manufacturing, but basically uh, summing up, right, our sales, um, Sales revenue, uh, revenue, which is an you know, price times quantity, and then uh, investment income. Uh, those are two major sources of income. And expenses are broken down into uh, two major categories. CGS, which is directly related to production. Okay. And uh, operating expenses are OPEX, which is, you know, uh, uh, not unrelated, but you know, indirectly related to production. But I, I said uh, uh, unrelated uh, here to make a contrast, right? To contrast, to make a contrast between directly related to production um, uh, and indirectly uh, related to production. So um, it's not that difficult to um, uh, follow. Uh, so far, because you know we understand what CGS is, and which is also equal to uh, total variable cost, and the total variable cost is average variable cost times quantity, and also the average variable cost. Another name for that is uh, production cost per unit, right? production uh, I will just abbreviate as prod okay so takes too much time uh, I already wrote this uh, before the uh, uh, video, starting of the video <laughs> to save time. Uh, so, um, uh, interesting thing. I mean, th there's a slight uh, addition here, but you know, uh, let's let's keep going. So, operating expenses uh, is indirectly related to production, and uh, it is uh, uh, roughly equivalent to a uh, total fixed cost. It's approximately equal to, and it's, I said um, in microeconomics, total fixed cost is not just the OPEX, but a lot of uh, fixed cost uh, consists of sunk cost, sunk cost, right? Uh, which is, you know, basically initial investment. So what is a sunk cost? Um, uh, let, let's, you know, go back to this example of computer manufacturing plant, a company, you know, a company has a plant, right? Because it's manufacturing. Now think about it. There is no manufacturing without the plant and equipment, right? So, Plant and equipment is the initial investment, right? You have to, uh, uh, there is no manufacturing that can start 
the business without having the plant and equipment in place first, right? And plant and equipment requires, you know, construction, right? So uh, it will take some, you know, construction time, right? Uh, to, you know, uh, build a plant and put the equipment into it. And this is, this cost is, you know, um, think about it. Whether you produce any computer or not and uh, start making income, right, or revenue in this case, um, this cost has to be incurred already. You know, the cost for plant and equipment must be expensed, right? So the, the initial investment is already sunk into this business. So that's why it's called sunk cost. And the sunk cost is fixed. Isn't that right? Because the uh, initial investment doesn't change with the production level because it's already in there. I mean, um, uh, think about it. The initial investment, size of the initial investment depends on the planned output capacity. I mean, if you're if you're planning to uh, if uh, put out like you know uh, uh, hundred thousand computers a year, hundred thousand computers a year, um, the output and that's the maximum output capacity. If that's the maximum output capacity, the size of the and the uh, uh, production. Uh, the the scale of equipment right already fixed right it's it's set and it cannot be stretched out like you know rubber band right because these are physical um equipment physical capital uh, so once it is you know uh, uh and so the investment the amount of dollars that goes into that depends on the size of the plant, which is, in other words, the production capacity, right? If you're, produ if you're you know, um, projected uh, or uh, proposed production capacity is 1 million units a year, 1 million computers a year, then the size of the plant would be 10 times, right? Uh, uh, the plant that will produce the ma whose maximum capacity is 100,000 units. Make sense? So all of this, um, uh, so the sunk cost is already uh, uh, determined and it cannot change, right? And it depends on the size of the uh, company, size of the plant. And think about it. How much would that be? I mean, plant and equipment for making computers, it would be um, in the order of, uh, probably hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Because it's, you know, uh, sophisticated, you know, uh, machinery, equipment, you know. Uh, uh. Now, <clears throat> as opposed to uh, um, operating expenses, which is mainly uh, focused on, um, like, you know, those things like rent, you know, um, uh, and you know um, uh, salaries to uh, clerical staff. So take a look at you know uh, uh, the line items here: rent, utility salaries, depreciation, R&D expense, marketing expense. All these things are relatively um, relatively uh, uh, independent of uh, initial investment, right? Um, and I. I said, as I said, you know, uh, this income statement reflects uh, okay. It reflects the um, uh, retail business rather than manufacturing. It reflects more, you know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So, 
it doesn't have anything that is, think about it, retail doesn't have planted equipment. So, um, uh, size of the operating expenses would be much smaller than uh, the operating expenses of the uh, manufacturing manufacturer. And in case of manufacturer, of course, the sunk cost will be spread over, right? It will be spread over many multiple uh, operating periods, right? In other words, you know, uh, uh, multiple quarters, you know, not just mul uh, multiple in this case, you know, means, could mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 48 quarters or, you know, whatever. But <clears throat> 48 quarters will be like, you know, um, uh, 12 years, right? Um, so that's the that's the difference between the uh, manufacturing, you know, uh, uh, operating expenses and uh, retail's operating expenses. <clears throat> now, um, and so if we subtract from revenue, and we assumed it's actually income, but you know we assumed that the uh, we simply assume uh, that the investment income in this case is zero. Uh, uh, okay, so we can say you know uh, income comes mostly from the revenue, and then uh, from the revenue we will have to subtract the expenses. So uh, from the income we'll have to subtract expenses. So we subtract CGS and operating expenses, and as we uh, as I explained in our last video, uh, we arrive at operating income or EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, right? And from the EBIT, because the name is already, I've been telling you, uh, self-predicting, right? Um, what comes next will have to be interest payment, right? <clears throat> because it's earnings before interest and taxes. After paying out interest uh, uh, from EBIT, then uh, it becomes EBT, earnings before taxes, right? Earnings before taxes. But now think about it. <clears throat> Another name for EBT is taxable income, right? And taxable in because that's the income right before getting taxed, right? So you pay taxes, um, <clears throat> and then you finally arrive at net income, or EAT. Now it is earnings after taxes. Okay. Uh, so net income is also called net profit. Finally, we are free to use the term profit. Okay. Uh, there is, you know, that pi. <clears throat> Net profit, right? Okay. Uh, AKA net profit. Now, uh, here's another thing we need to, a uh, uh, couple of more things we need to look into. Um, so the operating expenses, I mean, operating income or EBIT is the, um, uh, the uh, primary indicator of the profitability of a farm, right? But in accounting, they use something, they also uh, have a term called gross profit. Now, gross profit is actually, I don't like gross profit because it can be misleading. Why? Gross profit is nothing but revenue minus CGS. Okay? But you can understand this is incomplete because CGS is only one, uh, uh, one aspect or one element uh, in expenses, right? Uh, to make it complete, you have to subtract 
both CGS and OPEX. Make sense? So then, you know, uh, uh, EBIT is the true measure, first, first measure of uh, profitability. Of course, the final measure of profitability is the uh, net profit because uh, you can't, uh, before you pay taxes, you know, this is not all yours. And before you pay it out, pay out interest, uh, uh, it's not all yours, right? <clears throat> So the idea is, you know, um, uh, gross profit is not a, uh, a correct measure. It's just a uh, very rudimentary, very, you know, um, uh, inaccurate measure, right? Uh, the reason I'm saying this is misleading is, think about it. <clears throat> if someone's telling you, uh, and this person is trying to uh, uh, sell his business to you, or, you know, uh, is trying to sell his shares in this company to you and is telling you, oh, well, look at the gross profit. This company has, you know, a uh, wonderful uh, gross profit. And let's say the gross profit is really good. Huh? Uh, let's take this example. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I'm not going to use these numbers, actual numbers here. Uh, so let's say the gross profit is something like, you know, uh, uh, $1 million. So you think this is a, a, right, a profitable company. But anybody with basic understanding of financial accounting would understand. Um, but that's only the direct cost. I mean, after subtracting the direct cost, what about the indirect cost? What if the OPEX was, you know... Uh, uh, $900,000 or 990000 dollars or 999000 dollars Although then what's the operating income then or EBIT? Huh? It will be only one thousand dollars if right if operating expenses are uh, uh huge. I mean uh <clears throat> Of course, in case of manufacturing, direct cost would be uh, significant, right? And r relatively, you know, uh, relative to uh, uh, CGS, uh, the direct cost, indirect cost would be relatively uh, smaller. Uh, but, you know, you can't completely ignore the possibility where um, direct cost is uh, small, and operating expenses are huge. And in that case, you know, just using gross profit as uh, a measure of initial measure of profit uh, can be misleading, uh, grossly misre misleading, grossly. Now, <clears throat> so uh, next thing is, uh, let's think about the interest. Of course, interest is, um, uh, it's the payment to creditors, isn't that right? We have, we pay interest because we borrowed money. So it's, this is the payment to creditors. And then taxes are payment to government, payment to government. Okay. Um, smart people quickly understand what these, you know, uh, uh, acronyms mean right uh, you don't have to spell out everything spelling out everything is elementary school right if you're in elementary school you have to spell out p-a-y-m-e-n-t otherwise you don't understand right but mature people make that connection quickly oh what would that be what else can it mean payment in this context right uh, I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, lots of times, you know, uh, uh, students ask, you know, professor, is there a, uh, a list for, you know, um, those, you know, symbols and acronyms? Uh, uh, no. I mean, you know, some 
textbooks provide uh, the list of you know uh, acronyms and symbols, but you know that those symbols and acronyms uh, slightly vary from one textbook author to another. I mean, they can slightly use. <clears throat> So interesting thing is, uh, uh, these terminologies vary slightly as well. Why? Um, for example, uh, let me what is uh, here they use. Uh, Notepad. What is Notepad? It's actually uh, net operating profit after taxes. Net operating profit after taxes. So what is that? That's EAT, earnings after taxes, or so net profit. But then uh, the terminology, uh, you know, just depends on. I mean, if you are an expert, you understand because what else would it mean? Net. Uh, this is operating profit, right? Another name for the uh, operating income is operating profit. So uh, then net operating profit after taxes, right? So um, it is useless. I mean, you know, it's a futile thing to uh, have a, uh, a list, list of uh, it's time consuming, first of all. But you know, uh, if you are following the lecture, right, um, uh, thoroughly, and every time I use symbols and acronyms, you can make a side note on your own, right? Also, uh, uh, another thing, uh, income, the term income uh, this is what I don't like about accounting because accounting uh, doesn't make distinction between income and profit. They use the term just interchangeably. Now, income is in gross state. I, I want to reserve the term income only for the gross state of income. And after subtracting expenses, then it shouldn't be called income anymore, right? After subtracting expenses from here, it's better to call it. It's better to call it operating profit. Uh, but I would like to uh, uh, reserve the term profit for net profit only. So here, uh, I prefer to use EBIT, earnings. And I told you in the last video, earnings is the um, pretty much the. Um, uh, same thing as profit. And then uh, uh, calling this net income is still, I feel very uncomfortable calling this income because income should be reserved for gross income, right? So here, uh, the better term is net profit, okay? So, um, or EAT, earnings after taxes, and this is this is a kind of pun. It's you know what pun is, right? I don't want to write this. Only in English language, right? Only in English language. Um, this is possible, and it makes sense only in English language. Now, I told you, uh, EBIT, operating income. Uh, you cannot touch it yet, right? Because you haven't paid interest in taxes. But once you have paid interest in taxes, I mean, you cannot touch what goes to the government, the government's cut, right? If you touch uh, the government's cut, if you then uh, you will be in trouble, right? So you cannot touch it. But after uh, paying out interest in taxes, then you can touch it. Right? Not just, you can not only touch it, you cannot just touch it, you can eat it. Eat what? Eat the pie. You can eat the pie. 
right? You can eat the pie. That's why uh, EAT and profit, really, pie, uh, makes such a uh, perfect, perfect sense or jive so well only in English language. Why? Because in other languages, uh, would it? I can't imagine, right? In French, uh, uh, they wouldn't. Uh, the term will be still uh, profit. Profit is you know uh, profit for or uh, rang. Um, yeah, um, uh, rang or something like that. Uh, but you know. It, can there be acronyms like this, EAT, you know, because, you know, uh, and even if uh, uh, there is an acronym like that, you know, uh, uh, French for uh, eat, uh, to eat is manger. <laughs> so <laughs> it cannot happen, you know, uh, um, only in Eng English language. Now, <clears throat> another interesting thing, uh, another thing is, uh, uh, so we have uh, we have identified uh, what interest rate is, and I mean uh, what it means, and what taxes uh, mean, right? They are basically payment to the parties that are uh, that are providing something. Um, uh, interest is paid out to the uh, creditors who provided capital, right? Uh, debt capital. Um, then, think about it. CGS and operating expenses, OPEX, are payments to the resource providers. Resource providers, isn't that right? CGS goes to the providers of capital, uh, labor, and raw material. Make sense? Operating expenses go to the providers of uh, the space. I mean, if you're leasing or renting uh, the plant, uh, even if you own you own your own plant, it's not for free. I mean, you know, uh, if you didn't own it, you would be paying rent, right? If you own it, uh, you're paying yourself the rent, right? In other words, um, the, what would have been otherwise paid as a rent uh, you you are paying uh, to the uh, the if you're paying to the um, uh, the bank that uh, loans you money to buy that plant, right? So um, and also there's an opportunity cost. I mean, if, even if the uh, uh, the plants plant space is paid off, right? Uh, still. Um, uh, the plant space better pay, uh, the plant space better uh, be used well to the productive uh, activities so that uh, if it is not used for uh, supporting your production, it better be rented out, then you can at least earn rental income from it right that's called opportunity cost but you know uh, in accounting they don't uh uh recognize they don't understand i mean uh, it's not that they don't understand but they don't recognize opportunity cost but in economics they uh, opportunity cost is a very significant uh part so think about it <clears throat> so these are the uh, payments to the resource providers this is the payment interest is the uh, payment to the creditors and what did taxes, what did the government provide? Well, the government provided a lot of things, infrastructure like roads, uh, 
uh, water, elect, uh, you know, um, electricity. Uh, in, in in some countries, uh, you know, uh, electricity is public. Ut uh, the government uh, in the U.S. public utility is a uh, still private company, but uh, uh, in in most other countries, you know, uh, utility is uh, run by the uh, government, by the state, and you know. Uh, public education, policing, right? Uh, national defense. I mean, think about it. Without policing, national defense, and infrastructure, uh, and public education for, uh, if you uh, suppose, you know, they are all absent, then will you build your plant there? There's no policing. Uh, there can be bandits, you know, uh, burglars and bandits and even